which is almost unprecedented. Yeah. However, a bit of a dark shadow is uh, looming over Mr. David Cameron because uh, there's been great concerns for his personal safety ever since uh, he was bumped into by a jogger. And uh, the Daily Mail here, major article that uh, Mr. Cameron is now being forced to reinstall the um, uh, police motorcycle outriders every time he uh, travels in his uh, big black limousine because obviously somebody could jog into the limousine, presumably. Yes. What's he scared of? Well, I don't know. We did have a word with Mr. Cameron and apparently he said he just can't believe that anyone would hate him. Mm. Uh, so we think that the Prime Minister's in, in heading towards deep psychosis at the moment because he has believed that everybody in Britain loved him. Now somebody's bumped into him. He's going to have to spend hundreds of thousand pounds a year on motor motorcycle outriders to protect him from joggers. Mm. I'm sorry for him. Yep, there we are. That's what you get if you vote Conservative. Uh, well, banking and probes. Uh, yes, a currency probe. Well, this is uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, of course, which has set aside four hundred million pounds to cover uh, what they're calling potential costs from uh, the investigation into the manipulation. Uh, of the foreign exchange markets. Uh, we've seen this, uh, we've covered this sort of subject this week already because obviously banks in Europe and also the United States are doing similar things. Uh, and this in fact follows uh, Barclays' decision and they're going to set aside £500 million. Um, of course, this is all about probes. It's all about, uh, well, in fact, RBS stated, uh, we know we still have a long list of conduct and litigation issues to deal with and much, much more to do to restore our customers' trust in us. Conduct and litigation issues. Conduct and yeah. litigation issues. Not criminal acts, not fraud, not corruption, but conduct and litigation issues. Uh, but of course, um, how are they dealing with this? Well, they're setting aside this money, uh, and how are they paying for it? Well, they're not taking it out of their bonuses, of course. Uh, what they're doing is they're shutting down 100 branches. So in order to uh, restore customers' trust in them, what they're going to do is inconvenience customers by making them walk f further to the nearest branch. Uh, and Lloyd's doing exactly the same. They're closing 200 branches. Um, so this clearly is a, a sort of an approach that the entire cartel is taking. Um, and uh, I think it's about time we saw, you know, perhaps customer trust may be reinstated if we saw some of the uh, bankers committing the fraud going to prison. Just as a suggestion, just a throwaway. Pretty unlikely, Mike, I think, actually. But this word probe is brilliant, isn't it? Because it's suddenly come into the press. We don't have police inquiries. We don't have police investigations. It's now a probe. No definition of what that actually means. It's just a sort of word you throw in. And if you're a banker, of course, it doesn't matter what you do. Well, because these criminal acts just aren't really important. No. no. Um, but however, if you a, are a survivor of child abuse, then of course the law works in a completely different way. So we bring you a very short summary on the trial of abuse survivor Melanie Shaw. Um, she appeared in court over three days this week, um, Monday through to Thursday. Uh, here is a picture of the um, Nottingham Crown Court building. Uh, one of the things we can say is that when you get inside, there's a huge cafeteria area which is no longer used uh, as a part of the Ministry of Justice cost-cutting exercise. Well, we did show this photograph, uh, which was Melanie after the first day in court where the CPS branded her as having a grudge against the woman who'd worked with social services when uh, social services took Melanie's son. In the following uh, part of the hearing and the next day, um, uh, the evidence uh, put forward by the CPS was challenged. The handwriting expert uh, confirmed in court that she couldn't uh, be certain beyond all reasonable doubt that the handwriting in the graffiti on the wall at the time of the fire incident was Melanie. She couldn't be certain. Uh, so that breached the beyond all reasonable doubt rule. Um, and uh, in the fingerprint evidence, uh, the, the bag that was left at uh, the uh, criminal damage with paint uh, contained Melanie's fingerprint, as she said it would. It was her bag, but nine other people, eight or nine other people, uh, were identified, were, were there with fingerprints, but they were not identified by the police because the police had not investigated those mm -hmm. other fingerprints. 
Um, so um, it appeared that her defence team put, put across a very strong case, uh, that there wasn't an identity of the person setting the fire of the shed, nor the person carrying out the criminal damage. And other incidents of uh, criminal damage had been reported in that particular area of the city over, uh, over a period of months. So where did that go? Well, uh, the um, final judgment was yesterday, the decision of the jury, and it was really utter astonishment um, of the... Uh, can we bring that on screen, Nick, please? Thank you. To the astonishment of the public present, Melanie Shaw was found guilty on both charges. That was arson, reckless and criminal damage. And she's now bailed for psychiatric reports before sentencing. Now, there were some remarkable things happened in uh, the latter part of the hearing, and this is one of the key ones. After the summing up, <coughs> excuse me, Judge Pert is reported as saying to the jury, don't be thrown by the fact that Operation Daybreak is a conspiracy theory. Now, this is a remarkable statement because, of course, part of um, Melanie's defence was that strange things had been happening around her ever since she'd become a whistleblower for the abuse at Beechwood uh, Children's Home, Nottingham, and uh, that had resulted in Operation Daybreak. So a key part of Melanie's defence was uh, that the moment she became a whistleblower, um, clearly there were going to be people with the grudges against her, but strange, strange events were happening. But that's the direction to the jury? It would appear to be a direction to the jury, but I think that's supposed to be a criminal act, mm. directing a jury. Uh, but if that isn't enough, um, it's also been reported to us by several members of the public uh, that when Melanie was in the process of um, giving her own evidence, the judge said to the jury, don't be put off, that Melanie is a bit strange. Uh, so we're, we're really not sure what the judge was trying to do with, with these comments. Uh, we can have some discussion on that. Uh, but I think many people will be deeply concerned uh, as to these um, alleged comments by the judge. Yes. Well, if we go in a little bit deeper, of course, we now have a senior uh, judge saying that Operation Daybreak is just conspiracy theory. Uh, so we thought, let's have a little look again to see whether we'd got things wrong. Well, here's the Nottingham Post, and it says a huge investigation called uh, Operation Daybreak is examining allegations of sexual or physical abuse against children in, a no, in now closed homes. So police investigations are conspiracy theories? According to this judge, Mike, yeah. Uh, well, the BBC even um, picked up on it, and here we are. They also say in 2010, Nottinghamshire Police launched Operation Daybreak, an investigation into allegations of abuse at Beechwood from the 1960s. And we can also go to uh, Jordan's solicitors, where clearly on the front uh, of their website, new probe into abuse at uh, Nottingham mm. Homes. There's that famous word, the yeah. probe. Operation Daybreak, a large-scale police operation investigation concerning a number of claims relating to incidents of abuse at home. So presumably all these um, people are mistaken. They must all be conspiracy theorists. Um. It would seem so, according yes. to the judge. Well, we decided to go back and have a little look on um, Nottinghamshire Police website. Now, we may be mistaken, um, but when you try and do a search for Operation Daybreak on Nottinghamshire Police's own site, you don't find anything. We had thought there were some original news reports about Operation Daybreak, uh, apart from anything else. Um, other victims were being encouraged to come forward to the police. Uh, but I did a search just before starting the program, and uh, it comes up with no results. Strange, then, that lead officer, um, Detective Inspector Yvonne Dales, um, is in charge of Operation Daybreak. And if you have a look at her own um, LinkedIn, uh, page, LinkedIn page, thank you for that, here it is. Uh, we can clearly see... Uh, that she says that she's got strategic lead for domestic abuse, dangerous persons, adults at risk, multi-agency safeguarding hub, interesting term, and uh, is the senior investigating officer for Operation Daybreak. Well, presumably, nobody's told her that that actually is a conspiracy theory. So we will leave it there. We remain very, very concerned uh, for Melanie Shaw. 
uh, because out of nowhere in the trial, a very adverse um, psychiatric report was produced. Um, uh, it was being bandied around about schizophrenia and other serious mental illnesses. Now, none of this had been revealed in any previous hearings. And uh, Melanie has now effectively disappeared on bail. So this may be for her safety, uh, but one thing is for certain that she needs um, support uh, within the community, both from her own GP and her previous uh, uh, mental health carers. So uh, we haven't got any further information to report at the moment, uh, but clearly some extremely strange events going on in, in court and members of the public absolutely stunned that the jury returned the verdict they did after the defence put forward. There's a comment there in the chat box that if the jury are not given the evidence, then they're going to come to the wrong judgment. Um, but of course, that equally happens if the judge, uh, and if the judge in this case has done so, if the judge undermines the evidence that is presented in the court. Well, I, I'm, I'll use the word alleged. It is alleged that uh, the judge gave the jury some some form of written guidance. advice or guidance on presumably how to reach their verdict. But this, of course, was not shared with the court uh, or any of the members of the public. So nobody is too sure uh, what would have taken place there. However, um, I use the word shocked. Members of the public were utterly shocked. Uh, when uh, the verdict was returned. Uh, the other thing which was interesting is that when the public left the court, they were confronted by an extremely heavy police presence. Uh, many members of the public described the police behaviour as threatening and intimidating. Uh, some people commented on the scruffy nature of the police. Many of them, I think, were unshaven, uh, aside from tattoos. And... Um, one police officer was prepared, however, to volunteer that they had been called by the judge. Um, did the judge know what the outcome of the jury was going to be? Yeah, because he called them before the jury returned a verdict. Well, this is what uh, we need to establish. Uh, but um, nevertheless, when the public came out of that court hearing, uh, they found the, president, the presence of Nottinghamshire police in the vestibule area was absolutely intimidating. So there we have it. If you are an abuse victim, it's so far been demonstrated in Nottingham uh, that far from sympathy, concern, care and the necessary support, um, that's clearly not forthcoming. Uh, what you can expect is uh, a pretty vicious re regime. Is that to uh, close down the abuse, we wonder? Uh, well, just a final little comment on non Nottinghamshire Police. Of course, if you're a senior police officer, um, then uh, traffic speed limits are a conspiracy theory. Um, this uh, young lady, senior police officer Helly, Helen Chamberlain, uh, was uh, driving at 79 miles an hour in a 50 mile an hour limit, um, but uh, basically uh, she was only cautioned for that, mm. uh, presumably because she was a police officer. Mm. And where does it lead? Well, it leads to prisons, and uh, we found it interesting that after our comments on the vile treatment of Melanie Shaw in HM Prison Peterborough under private control of the French company Sodexo, uh, here we are now with statistics reporting a huge leap in the number of prisoners um, killing themselves in prison, deaths in prison, and the figure here, 235 prisoners died in the 12 months to the end of September 2014, a mere 19% increase on the previous year. So well done uh, Chris Grayling and David Cameron. Uh, as they're cutting the budgets, they're reducing probation, they're bringing in these vicious profit-making companies, and what have they achieved? More deaths in prison. Mm. But I suppose that saves money, doesn't it, really? Indeed. Okay, David Miliband, or sorry, David Miliband, Ed Miliband. They're so similar, Mike, actually. Well, they are, yes. Ed Miliband uh, is uh, promising.